here we have our RRS project car for this year. Uh, 1970 Ford Maverick, quite a rare car in, in its own right. Uh, but right there with XB Falcon Coupes, XP Coupes, narrowest engine bay of just about any Ford fitted with a factory V8. We're already in the process of converting it from left to right. So it's user friendly on Australian roads. It'll stop on a pin with some RRS brakes, RRS rack and pinion. And of course, we're gonna show you the engine swap conversion, step by step. So let's start. And here's our donor car, 2018 statutory ride-off Mustang with only 4,000 Ks on it. So you can see this thing's had a good hit, that's why it's a statutory ride-off. All the airbags have gone off because of frontal impact, rear impact. However, the motor and transmission are in perfect order. The most important thing to assess when you're looking at this is frontal damage if it's had a hit in the front like this. If it's had a front impact, it could fracture the air box and the air intake and shower shards of broken debris into the intake while it's running. Usually when a car like this has been written off, it's because it's running at full tilt, usually. The other thing to watch out for is with this radiator and all the front pieces, going into the timing case, damaging wiring, sensors, uh, crankshaft pulley. None of that has been touched on this. So that's all good news. The next thing is underneath the car, making sure that it hasn't gone over something and damaged the underside of the motor and transmission. And the same with the rear drivetrain. So all of these things you need to assess individually. There's more to it than that as well. If it's had a side impact, you need to assess other parts that could have been impacted. But the most important thing is that the motor is sound, the transmission is sound, and all the wiring on the motor is sound. Minor repairs you can execute, but you want it as complete as possible. Same if you're buying a, a motor from a donor wrecking yard. You know, you're sourcing your motor from a, a junk Mustang that's being wrecked. You want to make sure you, all the components that you require to be able to transplant this engine into another vehicle are all there. So once you've done your first assessment, the next thing is we're going to pull it apart. So the first thing is safety. Disconnect the battery so you're not going to have any short circuits. This has the AC that's been damaged so we don't have to capture the gas from that. It's already gone. Next thing is disconnecting the cooling system so that we can access the rest of the motor. I'm going to remove the air box. I'm making sure we know any damage to the wiring so that what's relevant can be repaired before we reinstall or run the motor outside of the vehicle. The main wiring harness on the motor is connected to the computer which sits in a small casing underneath the fuse box in here. It's covered by an anti-theft device which we just grind the studs off. Once you've got this anti-theft device off you can disconnect your engine harness from the computer. That means that all the wiring on the motor is now standalone. We still have to disconnect the transmission, but we're about to get to that. You need to disconnect the main power cables that feed the starter, and of course the um, electric rack. All of the other fittings on the engine are now disconnected. The fuel line, and disconnected. The AC to the pump, disconnected. The vacuum line to the booster, disconnected. The vapour recovery line that goes back to the tank, disconnected. The heater hoses, disconnected. So right at this point, all the top side of the motor is ready to come out. So we're going to go underneath now and start disconnecting the underside. All right, so we've got a series of things to disconnect here on the underside. Your exhaust, you've also got your gear selector cable 
and your main wiring plug to the gearbox. I've just disconnected the starter motor trigger wire and the main power lead to the starter motor. The hardest thing pulling one of these out is knowing how all the wiring plugs clip together and not ruining them as you're taking them out. Or dropping spanners. Undo the tail shaft, the four attaching bolts to the flange on the 6R80. This is an automatic transmission as you can see. In our conversion we're going to use the 6R80 six-speed automatic transmission. We'll be explaining how to set it all up and get it to work in a completely different vehicle. Fantastic gearbox. The way this engine comes out, the easiest way, is to drop the entire front end as an assembly. So, wheels, shock absorbers, rack and pinion, and the whole K frame. It's a series of 10 main bolts, cross member, rear gearbox mount bolts, two here, four along the side, each side. Just drop the whole thing down with the motor and gearbox sitting on it. So the last thing I'm going to do is disconnect the brake lines. That's one side. And we've undone the top of the uh, struts so they're no longer attached to the chassis. So it's really the motor is only being held in now by two gearbox cross member bolts and four front cross member bolts. Everything else is undone. Okay, now we're about to lift the car off the motor. Yep. Yep. Put, put a lever up. Uh, this was quite a hit because it a actually has broken the engine mounts. It's got a bent cross member made it a bit, a bit tight to come out. You can see the damage in the tie rod arm and the lower control arm. Other than that, I think we've got a really good one here. Everything looks good. So in stock form, these motors are quite a healthy motor. Um, 420, 435 horsepower. This is a pretty good base to start with. The exhaust on these things in standard form is highly restricted. So as soon as you bolt the RRS headers on, instantly you can tune in another 20 horsepower with no problems whatsoever. Modify the air intake, a few other mods, and again, a decent tune. You can be heading towards 500 horsepower with an unopened motor. This is quite incredible when you think about it as a five litre engine from the factory. Love these things. Yeah.